my name's Diane. You're currently watching the Just Kidding Round Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Each week, we introduce our home viewers to different artisans, and uh, we learn more about their talents. And I am so thrilled to introduce you to today's guest. His name is Martino. Is that right? That's right. I, okay. Do you That's want to look good. into camera two and say hello to somebody out there? Uh, hi, Mom. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Classic. Okay, hi, Mom. <laughs> so we'll get that on YouTube, so we'll be sure. Yes, she I'll sees send her the link. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Your name, Martino, where is that from? What's the history of that? It's actually a Portuguese name, but I am from Brazil. Okay, so he's from so. Brazil, but this show is in English. Yes. And um, when we opened, the opening credits were, were uh, it was on some beautiful, beautiful artwork, and you created yeah, I this. I did. Yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to be exciting learning about this. Yeah, it was type, for me too. Yeah, type of artwork because um, we've had people on that have done watercolor or oil or pastels. But the art that we're going to be talking about is done differently. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right. So do you want to tell us how maybe the cameras can bring up one of the pictures and can you just tell us what that process is? Sure. Uh, basically what I do is I start... Uh, all my art with the pencil and paper and I I just doodle and start doing shades and from there my mind kind of takes me on what it could look like and after a while once I figured out that it's somewhat of a solid idea then I scan it and then in the computer I color it all and then it becomes oh so it's done in the computer but you drew it first right it's scanned in right I didn't understand that before we started working okay so can we talk a little bit maybe could you guys focus on the one picture that has the eyeball in it is is that an eyeball what is, is that it is an eyeball what, what is that you know that's somewhat of a uh, a play around with the whole Egyptian thing that is supposed to be the very top of the pyramid, uh, except flipped. You know oh. how in the dollar bill there is a pyramid with an eye on it? Oh, so that square is like the last brick on top of the pyramid? Right, except it's oh. flipped, flipped upside down as if uh, that is what is actually there. There's supposed to be uh, this entrance, you know, that there's a heart shaped door that at this point has been open and there's all this love coming out of it. So these are, so those are hearts coming out at the top and there's all oh, that's precious and love's coming out. What about the eye? Is that an iris in the, in the middle of, what's I, in the middle that's of That's kind of abstract. I'm just not abstract? really sure. It just, um, yeah, I don't, a lot, of, a lot of stuff just comes out. Okay. It doesn't have any meaning to me at no. all. <laughs> <laughs> really, it just goes. Hey, you know, you're supposed to say you have all this deep, deep, you know. <laughs> I, and, it might. It, I just don't know. Well, and to the person looking at it, you right. know. Right. Um, and what about in the back? From here, I can't tell, but what are those things in the back? They look like maybe spaceships, or is that what they are? Right. It's some sort of a Persian-looking city with, you know, dome buildings and some, uh, it's almost like a, uh, old school futuristic city, but then there's spaceships all over, and they are actually the ones coming to collect the love. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're, that is so adorable. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny because when I first look at that picture, I don't know, I, I would never have thought that. I would have thought the spaceships were invading or something, hmm. but they came to get the love. Well, maybe they're and the still love's invading. coming out of the pyramid. Right. All right. And then, but again, I didn't think any. There's no story behind that. There at all. really isn't. I'm trying to read too much into it. Then. Uh, no, that's great. It's okay to oh, read yeah, stories. That's, I love that's that. what happens love, to art, though. Right. You I know? love when people tell me their ideas of what I created because I really didn't create any idea behind it. Wow, isn't that something? Yeah. So then you said you start by sketching on paper. Mm -hmm. How much of that did you sketch on the paper before you started working with Just it digitally? Just a pyramid. Just a pyramid. Just a and pyramid. then once you're working with it digitally, you added all I those added other things. Else, right. And do you mind me asking what program you use? I just use Photoshop, which is like... That's just Photoshop? Yeah, which is like GIMP. Uh, oh my goodness. One. So anybody that has Photoshop could do that, but I don't know. You make it look easy. You know, I've seen people draw... I don't know if you ever... If you remember the software called Paint. 
It came with the... Yes, a, years remember, ago, it's right. still around. Some people can do stuff like that. Ah, nobody's got that much They do. Talent. I've, I've seen somebody seen do the Mona like Lisa that. with just paint. Uh, and then you print, do you have a printer at home? No way. I, so you download it to something? Mm -hmm. I you, usually get, get it printed someplace. Yeah, but you must put it on a thumb drive or do you send it to him like, okay, all yeah. right. And then how about the one next to it? Is that your own rib cage or? You know, that one was actually a collective idea from this band I was in. We were, we wanted to, uh, I don't know, somehow incorporate this idea that the heart could be so big it could fit in your entire rib cage. Aww. And uh, and then from there I elaborated, I created, you know, there's more arteries than it normally has because it was supposed to be one for each member of the band. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, there's, uh, it's like some some of the arteries are having music come in or come out, whatever, you, you know, that's up to the viewer. And there's also love coming in or out, wow. and that's also up to the viewer. So the idea of that one is that Music comes in, love comes out, oh. or the love comes in and yeah. the music comes out. So, ah, that you would connect two. music with love. Right. All right. So, I want to ask you something about those paintings. Do, do you feel that um, when you are starting, do, are you always in the same mood when you start to sketch? Does that make sense? It does. Like every time you're sad, you sketch, or every time you're happy. Or you feel love, because both those kind of emit love. That's actually really interesting. I find myself sketching a lot more when I'm engaged into something else. Oh. Uh, like if I'm at work or if I'm studying, it's almost like a way to procrastinate. Then my mind says, okay, you need to doodle. And then from there, it turns an idea. I mean, I have a, a, a little book that has hundreds of little tiny sketches that later on become something Oh, so you don't immediately continue the process. No, in fact, I think that pyramid has taken me well over a year to complete. Oh, okay, I didn't understand that. I thought you kind of did it all in one sitting. Not at all. They It'd be fun forever. to see the different stages of it. Yeah, I know, I've, that's one thing I've never done. It's like yeah. keep the track and the stages. Yeah, that would be day. fun to see how much, you know. It's just so sporadic with me. And because I have so many projects that I work at the same time, sometimes I'll just, I'll do a little bit here and then I get tired because uh -huh. I reach like some point that is just kind of difficult. Yeah. And it's some barrier and I'm just like, eh, I don't want to hit this wall right now. And then I'll jump into something easier and then I go. It's kind of like a computer defragmenting a hard drive, you know, like there's a little bit here, a little bit there. <laughs> Sounds like the just... perfect uh, for ADHD, but you don't, right, see, right. You don't seem ADHD to me. <laughs> uh, what, what? No, <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> what were you talking about? Right. Where were we now? What? <laughs> so, um, and so that is just the program again is... Photoshop. Photoshop, but you say people mm -hmm. could do something like that, probably. Right. Well, the, the difference between those programs is just, uh, I guess, the difference between doing a digital and doing it in, you know, with oil yeah. or acrylic is uh -huh. that the, the software gives you a lot of different tools to make it easier for you to do stuff. Like, uh, for example, um, the moon, right, in the pyramid there. Normally what you would do if you were doing a, an acrylic paint or an oil paint, you would mm -hmm. get some sort of round object, a right. cup or a lid sure. or something to use as your base, and then you would circle around it, yeah. and then you would paint it inside. Uh-huh, right? sure. The computer has already a circle tool for you. Uh-huh. And you just use that to make your circle. Uh-huh. So it's, you know, it's just... So you make it sound easier. You know, I used to think it was cheating for the longest time. <laughs> for the longest time, I yeah. would look at digital art and I would say, oh, that's cheating. Yeah. That's cheating because it's a lot easier until I started making it yeah. on my own. Yeah. And then I noticed that if I didn't understand light, shape, color, and all of that, I could still not make it. The, you know, yeah. It's not because the software gives you extra tools that you can do it if you don't understand how to use the to tools. To put them together. Right. That's a good point. And, uh, you know, you could give me all the same equipment, believe me. I, I would never have thought, it's just the whole idea of that, you know? So are, do, what do you do with your art? Do you have it in galleries or? I've had it in galleries two years in a row uh, with Dan as the curator at the Urban Medicinals. Okay. And uh, it's been a great experience. Yeah. Not much sales, but, you know, just being there and being but around. But at the Art Walk, right? right. I don't know if yeah. a lot of people buy things at the Art Walk, do they? In general, don't mm -hmm. they just kind of go around? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I, 
I've only done it two years, so I okay. don't have that much of experience with it. We're that. making this in Olympia, Washington, and in Olympia we have an art walk. We have two right. art walks. Two a year. Right. And they have a lot. They usually have about 80 different venues and different vendors. They have a lot of stuff. They sure do. Artists. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've always wonderful. figured our place was a little secluded from everything else, so it's yeah. kind of hard to tell. Well, next time, get up on Capitol or something, yeah. maybe. So now, do you want to talk, tell us, Martino, about one of these behind us? Sure. These, uh, they are both trees, and for some reason, I find myself drawing trees a lot. So is uh, that one tree kind of, it re actually reminds me a lot of Chris Van Allsburg's work. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a children's illustrator. In fact, I could see you doing illustrations for books. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I've done. I've actually illustrated two books. Ah. Oh. They were from this uh, Egyptian writer who was writing in books in Portuguese. Oh. Yeah, he lives in Portugal, so uh -huh. I've, I've illustrated two of his books. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. But so which one are you talking about? Do you want to talk? Well, I was looking at this tree. That's kind of isn't it floating on a piece of? It uh, is. If the cameras can bring it up, I actually can see it better. Right. Is that a tree floating? The one on the left. Right. It's actually, uh, it's supposed to be a very tiny little tree that is floating in this little piece of land. Yeah, that's uh, cool. And then you can see there's a human boy staring at it from really up close. I'm not sure I'm seeing the boy. Yeah, if you look it up there, you might see it. Uh... It's behind. The background is a person. It's a little boy who's kind of just looking at this floating little tree. Uh-huh. Uh, but that tree was something I drew many, 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 many years ago. Really? And uh, it was just a tiny little doodle uh -huh. that I scanned and then I painted it and, you know, it looked really empty without anything. So I decided to paint a little boy behind it and I liked it. Yeah. And see, the cool thing about uh, digital art is that I only had to paint the main the main tree, the one you see in focus. Yeah, the uh, one that's kind of floating. Right, but then I repeated it and put it in different spots in the uh, in the artwork, so it looks like there's some some are closer to you than the other ones. Yeah, it gives a little dimension to right, it. Right, it gives it like a lot of depth into it. But do you have a favorite of your work? I don't know. I think the one I spent most time on is the other one with the, really? with the girl crying. It's just. Um, a girl's crying, yeah, she's and she's reading. sitting like it's to the right of the, the tree. Yeah, she's reading like, some sort of a letter. Um, you can't really tell what's written in there. It's but, too so small. So you, you don't even know, I even though even you, know. Create, no. you create it, you don't know it's in yeah, the letter. She's just, and uh, the print doesn't really show the uh, entire uh, picture because there's like this big eagle on, on the left, and there's also a big mountain in the back. It's kind of hard to see, mm -hmm. uh, but it's there. Yeah. There's some water, uh, and then eventually there's this big mountain with a, a little icy top on it. And, wow. Uh, yeah, the wind is blowing, and she's reading some sort of sort of message. Whatever it is, is making her cry. It looks pretty sad. Yeah. But, uh, it's even though the place is beautiful, um, she's still sad. I think all your, at least all the pictures behind us, to me, have. Uh, a lot of emotion Thank you. in them. It's not like painting a pear or something, you know, like still life. It's like they all have emotion to it. On, on this side, you have all these wonderful hearts and lots of joy, you know. Do you ever, do you ever make small cards? Do you ever have so, smaller sized ones? No, I've never oh. actually printed them small. So most of them are, are all printed. Are these one of you a You know, kind? this is the first time I've ever printed them. It oh, was no for this way. Arts walk. Yeah, for they've years. They've never been printed? No, they had never been printed. So they've been living in a computer. Mm -hmm. And these are the only pictures. This is the only prints I have. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's kind of surprising. Yeah. So um, this book in front of us, I don't know how we're going to get pictures of this. Can I, may I just choose a. Sure. Oh, there's, there it yeah, is. Yeah, there's the one. See, there's the eagle okay. there. It's oh, there it see. is. Mm -hmm. It shows up better here for well, some reason. It got, it got cut off. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. got it. So you know what? I think this one would show up well. And um, this right here. So how long have you been doing art? Drawing, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. But right. I didn't know I could actually draw until I went to school. Until I sat around with a bunch of other people uh -huh. and just realized that we were all doing this. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was no longer 
just a dreamer. It, you know, it was no uh, longer just like this. It was kind of acceptable. Because, you know, your like parents it. and society, everybody's like, oh, you need to make money. You need to <laughs> do this job that, you know, it's going to bring Don't you doodle. wealth. <laughs> right, right. And then once I was in this class and our yeah. first assignment, uh, the teacher said, your first assignment is to draw a character. Okay. And that was the character I created. It was that little guy there. This one right here? That guy right there. This is your first drawing ever? That well, was official in that, art Well, class. that was, right, right. I mean, I, I didn't create, you know, this is the, this is the finished product. But you uh -huh. know, I created him in class, and then I went home and spent many, many hours, you know, giving it, bringing it to life. But okay. that was the first assigned sitting there, and I'm looking around, and there's all these people creating amazing stuff. Yeah. And even though I felt like I was so below most Aww. people, you know, I was still, I felt, I, I felt like, I found the place where I belong. Yeah. It was with those people. Yeah. And I was that in America. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then I, all that discouragement went away. Then from there, I just started exploring, oh. really. And then next thing you know, so it was in America. You learned to be an artist. Right. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Are you? You know, you were well, born I had the an artist, right. but you you realized, yeah, you were. Well, I finally had more. the opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. over there, you know, in Brazil, it's a third world country. You're struggling to just live. Here I had a little bit more. Yeah. You know. I don't think of Brazil as a third world country at no, all. It's pretty bad. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Besides all the beaches and stuff. Well, yeah, that's what right. I think of. I, when I think of Brazil, like I think of beaches. And, yeah, right. that's what I always think of. So, so I had him up, and the cameras went in on this guy. Did do you ever name any of your people? Uh, his name was like Abby. He looks like he should have a name. He looks to me like he should represent. Yeah, there was a story. I hate story. to say it, but some brand or something. Well, there was a whole story we had to create for each character. And, ah. Uh, right, and then I ended up making a little comic out of him. Yes, I was going to mm -hmm. say, he looks like he could be a cartoon character. Yeah, he's actually kind of a zombie character. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, well, he has some sort of... Uh, mental issues and he uh, he eats people's brains oh and, he, oh uh, we went from those nice heart ones to somebody <laughs> that eats brains oh well, no. but he doesn't know that he does it it's kind of uh he falls in love with a person oh. or, or in the case of the story he falls uh -huh. in love with his dog uh -huh. and uh, he eats the dog's brain but uh oh. while he's he gets high off of eating the brains. I'm kind of sorry I asked about this one. We better move along. He kind of. It, it's actually really up. sad. Because yeah, it's ends, getting sadder. Yeah, because he wakes up and he finds the dog dead, and yeah, it's oh, pretty sad. Oh no! Like, oh, this is. Let's like, turn the page. What are those wonderful heart ones? So, um, so when you start drawing, do you you don't do? You, it sounds like you don't know how it what it's going to turn out to be. No, I never. Is that right? You just start doodling. Right. And then you scan it in. Right. I, in then... fact, I, I don't even know what I'm starting with. Uh, <coughs> sometimes I just feel like I need to uh, sketch something in my hand. I just let my hand go without me even thinking. Isn't that something? It's weird. So you don't, just, you're not even engaged necessarily? No, not you at first. You don't even know. I just let it come so up with lines. So you're not trying to do something. Lines, and then I do some squiggles, mm -hmm. and then from yeah. there, then I start thinking, well, this squiggle and this line kind of looks like this. Uh, and then I add a little shade to it, and then it starts bringing to life. While and, it's still on paper. Right. And it goes like this uh -huh. until it has formed its final thing. Oh, and that's when you scan it in. That's when I scan it in. Oh, so then you just add the color then, and right. texture. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting because I thought you put just the basic little doodle no, in and then start. No, I do it all. Okay, so I love this one. This reminds me of that guy Eminem, but it's not. <laughs> no. Can you guys get close on that? I, I want you to don't say who that is. That is somebody. Can the cameras get closer? Am I pointing to the wrong uh, camera maybe? No, two, not two. It's either one or three. I know that. But there is somebody in that picture, and they're walking there's towards three us. Of them. Well, there's three, but is it all the same person? It's all me. Yep. Oh, they oh, were supposed sorry. to guess. Yeah, all it's right. Eminem. It's Eminem. Martino, I'm sorry. I told you. <laughs> that's him in there. Yeah, that's not a painting though. Those are pictures. Um, that was so. a real picture that you put mm -hmm. on Photoshop. Right. It doesn't look like you. It looks like Eminem to me. Oh, I guess that was. But a it's because little... you jazzed it up so much. Right. The background is just so beautiful and. And I'm also, I, you know, Where I made my clothes look a little hip. It's some place in Japan, I think. You were in Japan? No. Oh, I was in my <laughs> you garage. said it's a real picture. Are it is. Like... Well, the picture, it's all pictures in there. The background is a picture, uh, and then I'm pictures. 
Oh, right. so that's Japan. It's yeah, you, it's, uh, even though you've never been in Japan. Right, it's a collage. I just love, you know what? I could see you doing album covers or something. You really need, mm. do you have a portfolio? That's it right there you're holding This up. is it? Oh, man, you need to, I shouldn't tell you. I hate that when people say, you need to <laughs> you do need, this. Right, right, you you need go to, do right. this. But I'm a librarian. And I, I mean, I could just see this being an album cover or Maybe illustrations be. for books or covers for books, you know. Mm. You are very exceptional. I've seen a lot of artists. So is there anything special you want to tell us um. in particular? About your art, or? I don't know about my art. You know, every art is their, wor their worst critics. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. Even though I like my art a lot, uh -huh. because it came, it usually came, you know, from me, and then I spent a lot of time in it. So, a lot of time invested, I eventually love it. But, um, so you kind of connect with it? You don't like, do you like your own art better than other art? No, it's not like a parent likes their own kids better. Well, than I, I, the I'm next constantly guy's going online and looking at other people's art, and then I'm just oh. mind blown of how good their stuff is and how oh. I'm never going to be that good. Oh, you did say that about that class you were in too. Well, you know, it just, it just happens. So yeah. some people are just so good, they're uh -huh. so good. But you know, but you got to do, do what think, you love. And how do you think that happens? Do you think people? Do you think you inherited your talent? Or? Well, you see, I think about that all the time because I do many things, right? Uh -huh. I don't do just paintings or photography. I uh -huh. also do video. I do music. Uh, oh. I've been a musician for I don't know, like 13 years now, and I actually picked it up really quick. But I, I do all this, all these branches. So like a of, renaissance of man. Art. Well, the, but the thing that I think is. Even though I am pretty good at many areas, uh -huh. I haven't focused in one to achieve greatness. And I think oh, that's where people go. They yeah, focus yeah. in their, there's one area and then they become really great oh, at it. Oh, that's interesting. Where I'm reaching all these other areas sure. and there's no way I can be great at all of them. Uh huh. I can only be pretty good at all of them. That makes a lot of sense. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I like, you know, being able to uh, take a video and then make my own music and then put it all together yeah. or do a painting and then animate it, you know, have all this. Oh, you can do all that, huh? Right. What kind, what kind of music do you do? You know, it's pretty interesting because now I'm actually working on a, like a solo uh, okay. album thing and it, it varies. There's uh, a little bit of electronic, there's some pop, uh, there's some that is more like Brazilian style. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, but I, because I don't, I don't play string instruments, it's kind of hard to make like rock oh. music. Yeah. Um, so Do you I'm have any of your stuff on YouTube? Not my music, not yet. Not your music, okay. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about this picture? I mean, sure. I want, I'd like to talk about your music more too, sure. but <laughs> we, I'm seeing we only have like five minutes. No, that's okay. The time goes by so quickly. I, I have some questions about this. Okay. I think. I think I'm looking at a shovel. Right? Yes, you have a broken shovel. Those are it's actually It's a broken two, shovel. Yes. Okay. Those are actually two different drawings from two different eras. Uh, I did I did the uh, I think I did the shovel first and I was trying to I was trying to come up with a, a ground that didn't look like a ground. Uh -huh. I wanted to make it look like fabric and it's kind of hard to tell on the on the camera there but um, but anyway, so the, the shovel on its own, it was kind of silly. I tried some different backgrounds and it just didn't work. And then one day I worked on that background by itself and it was its own thing. And uh, years later I decided to put them together and they Isn't that they interesting? And they yeah. just went well together. So why didn't you color this one? Did you put this in Photoshop? Uh, I kind of did just to enhance some light. Oh, so this is actually one of your drawings right. more than Photoshop. Right, right. Oh, and because the reason, come on, that's I've, a lot of you know, work right I've actually, there. I wanted to uh, color it, but um, uh -huh. it was just not turning out that great. Well, yeah, what color would you color a shovel I anyway? Know. Well, <laughs> I mean, aren't they gray? I, I, I was kind of thinking of the background kind of like a Grand Canyon type of thing. Uh-huh. Uh, but I don't know, but for some reason it just, it wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. And... Um, I don't know, I guess maybe because uh, a lot of times when I start painting it, I lose all the texture. Uh -huh. Well, not all the texture, but I lose a lot of the pencil texture, and I didn't want to lose the texture I created with this, so I just kept it. And if you would have painted it, it would have taken the texture it away. Right. Yeah. yeah. Does that, does it tell you a story when you look at it? No. Well. Maybe it reminds me of, you know, years back, but 
Not anything. When you finish a painting, do you get some sort of a, I mean, like, how do you know? It sounds like especially this pyramid that you worked and worked and worked with it mm -hmm. for a year, did you say, on the pyramid? I actually, I can say that the pyramid, I finished it because I wanted to get it printed. <laughs> that was the only reason. That was, yeah. So it's not this moment in time I when never, you think, no. oh, it's finally evolved or something no. like that? I never know when they're going to be done at you all. You never know when you're going to be no. done? No. I always feel like there's room to improve. Always. There's always so then room how, to improve. So you mean you could take any one of these pictures in here and keep working on them? Well, but see, the fact that I've put them in a, in a, a little catalog mm -hmm. kind of sets them apart from from being, you know. Finished from not being done. Uh, right. Yeah. Do you get a real sense of accomplishment when you finish something? When you go, oh, okay, finally. Well, like I said, it was the first time I printed stuff was for this arts walk. So until that then, I had not felt that. <laughs> that it was just living in your computer. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. Do you, do you know a guy by the name of Carl? He's working on the show. Carl. I think he's right over been... there behind the camera. He um, he does some interesting stuff on the computer yeah, too. Yeah, we were actually on the same gallery. Uh, oh, you were in the same gallery. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, but yeah. his his is different than this. But you know, right, also a talent. Don't tell me you drew this. Well, I painted this. It was over. I was looking at this. Uh, it was a picture identical to that picture. Because this looks like somebody very special. Right. It's... That used to live in Tacoma. Is that who this is? I don't know. It was just a picture I found online, and I just. But you actually drew this, scanned it, and colored it. No. Added the texture. No, that actually is all Photoshop. Oh, it's Photoshop. actually a picture. Oh. It... Yeah, that's all Photoshop. I was just. So you didn't draw that. No, I painted it that. With I was what? With Photoshop. Oh, you painted it in Photoshop. Right. Well, you know what? You are so fun to have on, and Thank so you. interesting, and so very, very talented. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't. Uh, but we're gonna have to get anything. ready, huh? I'm sorry I couldn't, you know, work Well, you on can anything. doodle on the way out, but I don't know if the cameras <laughs> could pick it up. Yeah. I don't know. So I want to thank all the people working on the show. I'd like mm -hmm. to name, list their names, but I don't want to forget. There's Arn and Max. Thank you. The first time I met them was today. Huh. Did you know those guys already? I know Max. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I John Amos, who's been working on my shows for years. And thank you. Dennis is in there directing, and he uh, directs for FOR. And, um, and oh, Carl, we already mentioned Carl, though, with his art. So thanks to the crew, great crew. And thanks to my viewers. Tune in again sometime for the Just Kidding Around show. We're on Saturdays, Sundays, and Wednesday, too. And thank you, Martino. Thank you, too. Yeah. Bye.